Fuck yeah, big dogs. This is fucking Mucho Drums from Great Electric Quest. You're listening to Doom Tomb Podcast. All you guys fucking get out there and fucking get some. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Doom Tomb Podcast, the podcast for all things stoner, doom, and sludge. My name is Chris. I am your host. Today, we have Josh and John from Secrets of Lost Empires. A few episodes back, I had them on, and Josh talked a lot about his illustrations and his artwork, and we're going to talk about the different art today, and that is his music. We're going to get into a track-by-track discussion of his latest release, and a lot of other things. And for some reason, tater tots in people's pockets? Hmm. Weird strangeness. And a few other people chiming in on the conversation as we go along. Check it out. This is Josh and John, Secrets of Lost Empires. We're back in the same place again. It's Yucca Tap Room, and we are in the arcade. It's, you know what? It's kind of actually uh, kind of quiet. Would you be, would you believe that, Josh? Yeah. Well, surprisingly so. The place is almost cleared out. <laughs> it was a really cool night. It was an interesting night. Mixed bill. We saw the band Mosara. We saw Grail, Cheeseburger Picnic, uh, Flight, I believe. And uh, yeah, you know, it was it was a really interesting mix. Um, so, but we got a lot to talk about, and the reason I wanted to have you back was because the first episode that we talked about, we talked a lot about art and your art and yes. how amazing it is and fantastic and beautiful and gorgeous it Very is. Very kind of you to say that. <laughs> it is phenomenal, and I hope that people take notice of what you do, and I, I, I really hope that maybe people hit you up for possible commissions. Do you do commissions for your oh, work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's um, it comes up every once in a while, you know? right? I'm, you know, it, it, could you bring it up closer? Oh yeah, yeah. There you um, go. The way I look at it, it's sort of, I'm I'm competent enough to put it out into the world, even though like I don't always feel fantastic with the end result. But it's you know, that's it, just the the thing that I do where I'm like super hard on myself, right? It's, but I still, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of where I was going with it. <laughs> well, it's kind of it's kind of a thing where, you know, I talk to this, I talk to other artists too, and whether it's whether it's the actual illustrations or whether it's the music, sometimes people don't realize like, you know, not everybody can do this. This takes effort and it takes a mind, mm-hmm. and that's something that you have. And I was like, please give that gift out. And, you know, obviously get paid for it, but, you know, get get that gift out so people can experience it because it is stunning. It is gorgeous. If, if anybody hasn't listened, go back and listen to the previous episode with uh, I, that, that I did with Josh and, and, and John. Uh, and it, we basically talked about his art. And now we're going to talk about music and whatever else is going on. Is that cool? Oh, absolutely. No, the, the point I think I was trying to make before I, like, completely meandered off with it was... <laughs> um, the the idea that I, I'm probably the worst manager of myself, you know. Sure, like I can do the work and take pride in the work, and still like struggle with like ah, you know, is it is it as good as it can be, and, and do that whole stupid artist thing. But I I have a hard time promoting myself. It's like you know, all all I can do that, like, as far as I take it is put it out into the world. Right, if right. Something happens afterwards where somebody approaches me and says, you know, hey, be great if you if you did this album cover for us, or would you do a poster for us, or like things pop up and it's fantastic. Sure, it's, it's it, it's um very flattering, but I you know I also don't like push, so it, it's like a weird, it, it's just a weird thing with me. Like I, I don't have someone else like pushing for finding those kind of absolutely you know, those jobs and you know opportunities. I sort of wait till it floats in, but you know that's that's my own. Uh, you that's know, your own giving. It's, yeah, it's my own personal hang up as somebody who like makes shit. You know, I, th- I think most people who create a thing are terrible at promoting it. Usually, and it's part. yeah, because you're you're of one mind, and it's hard. I've I've talked to bands about it, where even content like I just don't know what to put out as content, and it's like you just put out whatever you feel. It's like. Um, there's no bad content, I don't think. I mean, you know, with obvious exclusions. But, you know, as long as people... It's 
the thing about social media that catches me, it's like once people get a feel of what you are, mm. um, they're more apt to do something with what you do. Th- does that make sense? Absolutely. And it, there's also a component of um, everyone who makes a thing, whatever that thing is, has an inspiration that put them in push them in that direction they saw somebody who did it right and was like oh my god you know you can achieve this doing that absolutely you know creatively you know being it like oh my god this song is amazing you mean i can make songs and they could be amazing things um you're you're always going to have that 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 thing that you strove for that made you want to do it in the first place that inspired you to do it but you also have to balance that with what you know you're personally capable of doing Sure. Because I do that, like, singers are a great example. I enjoy singing. I don't think I'm great at it. It, you have to, you really have to deal with managing what, what you want to be doing. Right. You know, as opposed to what you're actually physically capable of doing. Sure, sure. And just, and be okay with that and make the best thing that you can make within those parameters. Absolutely. That, that you have. But there, but you're also always wrestling with like you hear your favorite album or you see your favorite artist and you go ah oh, Jesus I wish I could fucking do that that's, that's <laughs> god damn like what am I doing with my life right so it, it's it's a constant balancing act and you know that takes me right back to being a horrible manager for, for but, myself but you know what honestly with with the latest release waiting you really crushed it and it, it's it's not like any of your other. Well, it's not unlike any of your other releases where, I mean, the guitar work is so delicious. It's so Thank crisp you. and clean and clear. Now, we've, we've had something different here. Um, I apologize because I wasn't able to see it. I was at some other shows. You did a show last night. Well, when was the last time you did a live performance? Uh, it's It's been a little while. I'm trying to remember the last time. Um, not, jeez. Not to be uh, like too dark about it, but it was a, at a friend's memorial a handful okay. of months before. And really, yeah, and uh, it was he had passed away. He had taken his life like a week before, right? And he he played music. He was one of the first people I I really started playing shows with. I had a I had a band like a very short lived band before I met him, and uh, him and I used to you know so I transitioned out of that band. That the whole thing fell apart. And I met him at a job that I had, and he played guitar, and he just pestered me and pestered me and pestered me to play music with him. Right. And I was just like, oh, man, okay, I finally gave in. And it was fun, because um, the, the stuff that he, there were, there were parallels. There were places that we could, he wasn't very accomplished, and he was also into acoustic music for the most part. But I also grew up with bands like uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young, and sure. Neil Young. And so there was a whole, uh, you know, a whole plethora of music that i could pull from and and enjoy playing in that way right so we played together for a long time and we knew each other forever um a a little over 20 years and uh played music constantly off and on and uh he took his life and we had a memorial like a a week later and we played um what is the name of the neil young song Uh, uh cortez the killer can't believe I spaced that. Okay. But him and I used to play that all the time. And we'd play it, like, for 15 minutes. He'd, I'd keep looking over, you know, I'd be playing these guitar solos over it, and I'd keep looking over at him, like, are we going to stop this? I'm running out of licks, man. Right. Are we going to stop the song at some point? I'm going to sure, hit sure. a fucking wall and just be repeating myself. Right. But we'd play that song forever. and played it constantly, almost every set. So we'd do that song inside and out. So we, that's what we played. Uh, we ended up playing with it. Exactly. This guy knows. Oh, uh, you know. Yeah, Cortez the killer. Oh, I didn't. Even... That's okay. No worries. <laughs> no worries. We got. We got somebody. We, 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 hold on a second. We, I'm sorry, apologize. No, we'll, get, we'll get back to it. So we got a. We, what do we got going on over there? I see. I see a, 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 a birthday party for a fellow in that bar. Right now. Oh, there's a birthday party. Oh. Oh, so who's? Is that is that, is that one of these people? No, he's getting a drink. Well, what else would he do? It's his 21st birthday, right? You got it, brother. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so go <laughs> ahead. What happens. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Neil Young. Exactly. Neil Hell Young's yeah. badass. Most of the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, most of the time. Sometimes he does some weird shit. I could deal without wondering. 
you know that that whole when he went to that the whole doo wop thing. I, I I got this feeling like he was putting out stuff just to piss people off to well, see yeah. how far they would go with him. It's it's like the whole Bob Dylan thing, or like they they're always you know why does he why does he sing like that? Right. Like well you got to understand you know it he was. It wasn't always like that. He got really big, really fast, I think, and and he just always wanted to be a couple steps ahead of everybody. Right. You go like, you know, what is it? What is it you're admiring? Like this all seems like complete nonsense. And it's, like it, it's crazy. All the adoration, and then he just wanted to switch everything up just to mess with people. So I'm, I have no doubt that he did that. So you're at the memorial. You're playing oh, oh, the yeah. track. So so yeah. So it, it was that was the last time we played live. Like we played that for, you know. The, the end of the night and uh, it was you know one of the most frequently played songs that I played with him so in a way like we left a little empty space on the stage right. for him you know right so in a way it was like it, it, as I was playing it it was a lot like like oh this is how we get to say goodbye and yeah so it, it, it was a very like cathartic uh, nice nice way for it to be the last time well that I, was amazing for you to do that now oh it absolutely was before that how long has it been before you played live um before that it was it was sort of intermittent um I'd either be playing with his band uh, right or a group of his or we'd you know th- throw some other random thing together but it you know it had been a while since um since it'd been like a full band situation sure sure so being able to jump back into that was especially with just the two of us right it was I didn't think it would work I really didn't you know I'd, he wanted to play some of these <laughs> newer songs and you know I write everything with like two guitars in mind okay for the most part I like intertwining guitar parts okay you know I like being able to play melodies over everything it's just like it's I like layering melody on melody Sure. So you end up having to have like a minimum number of instruments involved to do that. Right, right. And the minute he was like, well, it's, you know, I'm going to book a gig. I'm like, just the two of us? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm going to book a gig. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm like, well, huh? there's like guitar solos and stuff. Like, what? how's this going to work? He's right. like, no, it'll be fun. It'll be a blast. I'm like, okay, I'm sure it will be. But seriously, though, what about the guitar solos? Like, <laughs> it's just, I just, I couldn't wrap my head around like how it was going to work. Because there's all these like open riffs, sure. And you know, of course, in my mind, I have these songs are like a certain way, and I've never heard them any other way, sure. You know, outside of like when you initially write the riff and you don't have, but as soon as you start layering shit, and that's how the song goes, that's how it's in my head. So like having to go through and deconstruct it with him, and and sort of convince myself like like oh okay, this sounds that sounds better than I thought it would. Nice. And I'm completely comfortable going out and performing. So, do you so. think that in the future, if you play some more gigs, might you add an extra guitarist, or are you just going to keep it as a two-piece? Um, you know, I would be, actually, I would be happy with a three-piece. Yeah. Um, we ran into, uh, there was a really cool guy that ran up to us, I think his name was, I want to say his name was Isaac. Okay. And uh, it was at the end of the show, he, he saw, the, saw the set, and he really liked the music, and, and he's like, I noticed you guys didn't have a bass player up there. Right. And so he plays bass. So, you know, that was just last night. So in the next couple of days, we'll get a hold of Isaac and we'll, if I'm remembering his name correctly, <laughs> um, this might come back and bite me in the ass. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to set something up with him. And he, he seemed like he was really into the music. So that's always what you want to find. You don't right. want to you don't, you don't have to coerce. So that, that's why I never really went looking. Like once the band sort of dismantled and we started jamming again, I didn't like... I figured it, he was right. It was the best way to sort of approach it. Just like, what what do we have? Right. It's just two of us, we're into it. Let's go right. do it. I completely was okay with that approach because we've we've had too many situations where you, you've got people that you just sort of pull in and try to keep in the band and maybe they're not that into it. And like, there's all this, it just causes so many problems. Right. But it was a constant. We, we never had a bass player who was like really into what we were doing. So... Now, how do you feel about getting that bottom end? Like, is oh, it something yeah. that you feel I mean, like you need to flesh it out? Or Absolutely. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's like being able to, I'm, I'm always wanting to break up spaces. Okay. Like, I like a good groove and a riff. Yeah. I also like laying a lead on top of it or a melody. You know, just having these intertwined things going on. So it, you need at least one other 
melodic instrument doing it. Oh, gotcha. Whether gotcha. it's another guitar or whether it's a bass. I mean, either one would have worked, but I'm, it's fantastic that it's a bass player. And it, that also depends on, like, I mean, Grail. Right. Like, their bass player, they're, they're fan-fucking-tastic. Their bass player is a goddamn lunatic. Isn't that crazy? Like, he's so fucking good. And, and it's almost like not to take away from at all from what there's amazing bass players so I'm not like disparaging at all what, what bass players do but it's almost like he's a lead guitar player who was like well, one of us has to play bass right and he's right, picked right. up the bass it's, yeah. it's got all these like lead guitar characteristics he's playing all these melodies he plays leads it's all this fucking fuzz and weird like a pedal board yep the only thing missing is six strings do you use uh, do you have a pedal board or you just play straight or oh no I absolutely have a pedal board I will fuck around with that shit all day long um, I kept it really stripped down last night. I just had this little boss amp. I right. Think it's it's 100 watts, but it's really tiny. And if you saw me walk in, like, I'm going to do a rock and roll show, <laughs> and it looks like an old black and white TV. You know, it's like that size. I'm like, what's this? You know, all the other bands had stacks and shit. Right. What's this fucking guy doing? This is a briefcase. So get it. And I tell the sound guy, I'm like, I promise you it's loud. You know, I'll just use the thing as... As a, like a monitor, I had it facing towards me, and they mic'd it. Sure, it was plenty loud. But since it, you know, since it was just the two of us, I didn't really need a whole lot of shit to fool around with, because you have there has to be enough there holding everything down. Of course. So like, if I'm playing guitar and I keep changing like my tone or adding effects or doing all, you know doing weird shit, there's the only consistent thing happening anymore is the drums. Right. So you have to. My proclivity is always to like go off on some kind of crazy walk into wherever with the, with the music is like melody wise right so I, I like having something solid laid down underneath it and then I can just go wherever the fuck I want over top of it now last night did you play a lot of stuff off of waiting or how did you what is did you take from um, other uh, from other albums or uh, it was other albums it was um, a song off her first album what we what we had to do is we had to go through and pick and choose like what would sound best as just two pieces okay that wouldn't have too much open space okay you know that it's very riff oriented so what do we have so we made a set list so what'd you pick from um we did a the first album we we played a density of a dying sun okay and then off of the third album we did um well let's just talk about that first yeah and we will get into waiting because that's the most current release but uh, Density of a Dying Sun, like, uh, can you, wh- how what, how did that track occur? Like, give me a little bit of the uh, impetus for that. Uh, I was listening to a lot of Down. Okay. You familiar with Down at all? Of course. Okay. Yeah. So they're actually, a- I think they just released that uh, they're going to be a psycho, and they're going to do, like, what is it, the uh, 30th, 20th, 25th, what is it? 30th. 30th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been out for a while. So I... I I would love to see that, but yeah, they, they were. It was, I had just discovered them, so I was listening to a lot of down, and just getting into that, like really starting to dip my toes into heavier stoner, yeah, metal shit. Right, right. And it just started, you know, it, it influenced everything, you know, just like anything else you listen to and, and really get into does. Like it all seeps in there. Absolutely. So you fit. You felt like it fit in for last night. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was. Right. It was. It was uh, you know, again, very riff oriented, and there there wasn't, you know, there's there isn't any kind of weird open space that sort of makes you wonder, you know, well, what's supposed to fill that? You know, it, right? It's, it's it was it was just one of those songs that was it was easy to make it feel like fully formed with okay. just two pieces. Okay. What else? What else did you have in the set? What would you take from from another album? Yeah, it was a third album. Was a I ate a flower, goat teeth. <laughs> is that which one? Which one is that off of? Uh, third album. So, built on the bo- built on the bones of the dead. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, so I'm embarrassed that I couldn't remember the name of the album. What can you tell me about that track? It was as as far as the actual riff goes. I mean, I I couldn't even begin to to say like that a lot of the times I'm just fucking around the guitar something comes up or you get a sound in your head start playing it right but but thematically you know we can go thematically with it they they all like lyrically they all tend to be um just sort of existential angsty like it's it's all about like what the fuck is going on right it's a right. lot of that just they're all anxiety ridden 
tomes. <laughs> no, really. I mean, they, they are. It's it's the whole the whole reason I was able to put three albums out in like a year was just stress and anxiety. Really? Like so that needing that, that feeds something, the machine. Needing something to like put that into. Sure. And like just sap some of it away so my head doesn't explode with it. Yeah. So. It, you know, a lot of it is like a, a weird blur, right? In terms of like just the, how it was made, how it was produced. It was so much of it was back to back, sure. And just you sit down, you start writing, and it's like, fuck, that sounds good. I like it, and you just start adding things to it. And the next thing you know, you got a song, and then you got an album, and then you got three fucking albums, and boom, yeah, and boom. Now, before we continue, uh, say hello, sir. Hello, it's John Quinn. And he was the gentleman that played the drums last night. We did, we did. At we Rips in uh, Phoenix and crushed it. Yeah, we uh, had our show last night. It went off really well. Fantastic. Now, um, if you don't mind, I think I'm just going to go over to waiting. Is that cool? Absolutely. All right, let's get let's get into it. So, waiting. Let's start out with. Uh, I'm just going to go track by track. If you got something to say about the track, that'd be awesome. Okay. Um, like lambs to the cosmic slaughter. Ah, okay. I discovered post rock. Sure. And that was sort of the impetus for wanting to make an instrumental album. Right. Um, I just I had a handful of songs that were instrumental that I just I just really wanted to expand on it and not have them like interwoven within a, other albums with lyrics. You know. Right. I just wanted something all on its own. So. I you know been listening to a lot of uh, like Red Sparrows and then I discovered a band called Palms and they're not instrumental at all but do you, okay what's, keeps, what's happening here he's pulling he's pulling tater tots Where? out of his fucking pocket it's are a, you, it's incredibly distracting is this, like I is this like potato. from Napoleon Dynamite kind of thing like are you gonna are you done with your tots are you gonna be sharing your tots I um I was finishing my tots at the bar yeah and I wanted to bring them with me to the interview. Well, it, I mean, I guess being in your pocket, it keeps them warm. Yeah, they're still fairly warm. If you guys want to, I wanted to share with you guys while you, you know the what I, I, as much as I love you and I appreciate you, I'm gonna pass. Um, and not so much that they were in your pocket, but I just don't see any condiments. Okay, with them. well, if, if anybody wants some tots, I brought some. Okay, it's like Jeffrey Jones at the end of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> it's like in the bus, and they I got some, with the gum. It's like that, but with gummy bears. I got some gummy bears. Shit. that are warm from my pocket. Thank you. The Neil Young fan yes. grabs the tots. Thank he you. don't care. Yes, that's his. It's a good tot. This guy just <laughs> ate one of the tots. I appreciate that. Uh, Yucca tab room, king of the tots. They got the coronavirus on them, or what? Yeah, <laughs> they do. We we've gone so far off the rails. I don't even know where the train is anymore. I apologize. Anymore. No, no, I, it's, I'm so no, 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 no. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> so let's. Uh, the unexpected is is always good. That yes. So what else can you tell me about like lambs? Oh, so. Again, it, it was it was wanting to it was wanting to make music that felt like how I felt, like so when I listen to it, it feels like something's being released somehow. Right. So it, it's a lot of like a lot of sort of tension building going on with some of the, you know they like that one in particular. It starts off like it's sort of slow and rambling, and it's it's got this spacious feel to it, this expanse. Right, and uh, then it just starts kicking in and getting tighter and tighter, and like it's squeezing, and then I think it releases again. Um, but it's, you know, like like any of the songs on there. I mean, it, it was just a way of of interpreting some stress or fear or anxiety, okay, and like just trying to channel it into something and capturing different vibes with it. It's it's a, it's a weird thing to talk about because it's such a. You know, it, it was all built around just dark, just feeling dark, right? About you know, so it, it, it's a strange discussion to have, I guess. Well, how does it feel when? Okay, so you make this release, and then when you see some of the reviews, and somebody says like, "This is an album for psychonauts everywhere," and they, it takes you to another space, it takes you to another plane, like you're getting, you're getting lifted, you're 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 going on a journey. Um, how does that make you feel when you know that like? The, the 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 basis of this came out of like anxiety it's fantastic I mean it, it's I always felt that um, 
you're always going to have there's always going to be somebody out there doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be large numbers right um, there's always going to be somebody out there who the thing that you're doing is what they were looking for exactly like, I come across that a lot like what if what if this band or this artist you know whoever decided not to put it out into the world and you know not even and not in, in an egotistical sense at all just the idea that it's like just communicating back and forth with creations right you know right. like this is interpreting how you feel about something through through art in any form and somebody else sending that back in in some other form perfect and yeah so it's it, it, it's it's good to know like okay. it, you know it, it, it's unexpected but at the same time like you, you just hope there's always that one person out there who's gonna connect with it absolutely and um, um, ha- let's move on to the next track comfort 77. That was one of the first ones I wrote for it. When okay. I when I first started screwing around with home recording, I had this you know this weird. I had a pile of riffs that you know I was never able to do anything with. Okay. Like once the once the band split up, like a riff box almost. Yeah, it was just you'd a never, box of riffs. You never stop writing stuff. <laughs> yeah. And my friend Matt, who I was playing music with at the time, um, he wasn't he he wasn't um, adept enough to play any of it, and it wasn't really his wheelhouse. Right, and which is fine, you know. It, but it, it was frustrating in the sense that I had all this shit piling up, and eventually I just decided I'm going to sc- record it all myself. Sure. So that was one of the first ones I did, and it, it was just an ex- it was a f- on the fly experiment. Like I had the main part of the riff, and I went through and I recorded it, and I programmed all the drums, and I just started layering shit over the top of it, and then that was, and know, boom, yeah. Then it was then it was done, and I listened back, and I was like, that's, and again, it was. I'm always trying to capture a vibe of something that I want to sit down and listen to. Right. Like you, I, I, there's certain, it's like making stew. Like there's ingredients that are just important to me that are things that I want to hear and maybe I can't find it somewhere else. Okay. Or maybe it's it's like constantly hitting like that dopamine switch. Or like oh, jeez, yeah, yeah. Like being in the hospital and just you keep hitting the morphine <laughs> button. Like I, I, will write, I will write songs that way where... Like oh, I really love when this thing happened in this other song, right, right? You know, or like when they when they created this feel, or like whatever space that they were in, you know, that was different from the rest of the song. Gotcha. And I'm like, I want to hear, I want that over and over again. Why why do you stop there? Right. And then I'll sit down and I'll write something in that in that space, you know, in that in that sort of uh, with that mindset. Now, is there a secret to a good stew? Is it it's, the bay leaf? Well, no, it's yeah, it's different for everybody. Sometimes it's garlic, right? Garlic is good, you know. Yeah, cumin good never gets talked about very often, right? Coriander, maybe coriander. It's, I've it's, never it's used difficult. it myself. It's difficult, but you can use coriander, and sometimes you got to level it out. Sometimes you got to put a little tang in there, get a, a, a citrus like a lemon or a lime or I'm something. I'm a fan of a of a basil. A basil, basil's good. Are you going fresh? Or are you going? Uh, fresh, of course. I mean, but you know, again, I'm not really a chef, so most of the stuff I have in the cabin is dried. Let me ask bottle. you this: This is a weird question, but I, I just got to throw it out because I had this experience. I've had this experience a few times, and uh, I made something recently called fire cider. Have you ever heard of it? Never heard of it. Fire cider. It's kind of like a tonic of sorts. You've got turmeric root, ginger root, horseradish root. Then I'm putting garlic and I put in jalapenos. Uh, it's in cider vinegar. Mm. And there's a couple other things. But one of the things I put in there is thyme. And there's something personally that I, that is my spice or, or my herb. I connect with thyme. And it's just like, it is probably one of my favorite aromatics of any other herb that I use. Mm-hmm. And I'm just curious, is there, do you have a connection? I know this is a, stuff, it's a weird question, no, but... Well, it leads, it makes me think of something. It's, it, it makes me wonder one of two things. First being, do you have any connection to it in childhood? Like, did your mom use it a lot, or you grew I up somewhere my, where... It, my mom was like a salt and pepper person. Like, we, okay. it was just bland stuff. I, you know, she, she, she listens to what I tell her when I, you know, when I make something... And she's like, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Hmm. And I, I really don't know, but there's something that takes me somewhere where I, in, I just enjoy time. It's the weirdest thing for me. So, is there anything like the, the only other, the only other, whatever it is, is, is mint. 
Okay. Like when I get mint, like I love to make a solid, like if it's an alcoholic beverage, put a little mint in there. If especially if it's um, iced tea, I put mint in it and I smack the mint to get the aromatics out. And it is, it, it's, it just fantastic. It's, it's the only other one I like. Yeah, so it's like a whole thing. You got a process for it and everything. I do. Uh, it's, it's, it's. There's almost, there's like a borderline romance for it. You know, <laughs> I, I, I know, I don't know how else to say it. I can't say that I, I can't say that I have any connection with any like particular spice or flavor. I mean, there's, yeah, I mean there. Not in so far as like it's something that I have to have every day. I have all kinds of connections where. You know, certain tastes or smells will make me think of you know. Other right, it's like the, the most potent memory enhancer is being is, is sure, smelling sure. something, so like an olfactory sense or tasting something. So I, I I have several of those, but I don't have any like proclivity towards a particular one. Fair enough. The other thing that it made me think of besides childhood is a uh, a buddy of mine used to say that he always craved pepper. Yeah. Be, you know, and his his theory was that his body was lacking in iron. Really? He was like, oh, I, th- I, my, I must be low on iron because I'm really craving pepper right now. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, pepper's really high in iron. It is? Yeah. So I would never know. Oh, that was another thing in the fire cider was mm-hmm. pepper. It's it. Believe me, I know it sounds disgusting and gross. My my wife does. She looks at it every day when I shake it because she's yeah. supposed to shake it every day. Ugh. And she's like, like, "This soup. is this looks disgusting." But like you, the fire cider, you're supposed to let sit for a month. You strain it. You add honey to it. It's supposed to take like a shot a day. So I don't know. It's supposed to be like an immune builder. Okay, I was gonna ask. It sounds like there's it, it, like a health thing. Yeah. Oh, completely health. Yeah. Like it, well, when you initially said fire cider, the first thing I thought was alcohol. So I'm yeah. thinking like, oh, you like home brewing something? Then you started listening uh-huh. to the ingredients. Yes. And I was like, that is not. That is, no. Nobody's drinking that. That's no. that's like something you feel like you have to do. It's shot worthy though. Yeah. Okay. Sh- actual shot worthy. So let's get back into the tracks. Um, asleep in the sand. Again, well, um, tell me. A lot of uh, you know, a good portion of the songs are about like trying to find some kind of peace, like trying to create some tranquility. And you know, I think that's if I'm rem- if I'm remembering how the song goes correctly. Yes. Um, that if I remember correctly, that's that's one of the the mellower ones. So you know, amidst also wanting to release anxiety, a lot of it was wanting to create something that sounded like it would you know be peaceful right, right so i could listen to it and just sort of space out on it sure like i love um i love pink floyd but well i love the idea of pink floyd more than i love pink floyd as much as i enjoy pink floyd okay. and i do there are th- there are things that they do that are just so weirdly british to me yeah 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 and, and especially also, the earlier stuff like saucer full of secrets and and but uh, there's there's a lot of fantastic shit thrown in there too yeah. like they just sometimes they go down a weird road and i go oh that's that was a little odd or that's not what i would have done right and you know boom that's where i decide that i'm going to do something that feels like that but taken in the direction that i want to take it into okay so do you have a fave uh, pink floyd track oh man that's a tough one um i, I would have to say echoes but echoes live at pompeii because I oh, have that, dude, I, you know, I it's have so that funny. DVD. Uh, I listen so to that good. while driving to work, and there's something about that. There is something magical about it. It's incredible. Like, it, it's, it's just one of those, you know, once in a lifetime kind of things. Like they could have done that with any other band, but in that time, you know, on that day, in that moment, in that place, it was just they created this crazy thing. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the impetus for it was. You know, when it, the first time I saw it, I didn't even know. I didn't know if it was like a not a trick but sort of like um like a gimmick or you know like okay. I, I didn't like you're playing at Pompeii like what's the okay yeah. what is this about because I hadn't heard you know I hadn't heard of it right but I you know I was really listening to a lot of old Pink Floyd and I loved that song and I was like oh I'm, I, I was just buying a lot of concert DVDs right. and you know it was just one of those that looked fucking cool but the concept made me wonder like well, how did how did this even come about I probably read about how it happened but I've since forgotten, but I just I just remember that initial reaction. Like this is fucking, this is so weird. Like who plays at Pompeii? I know, isn't it? I, but it was I, it was I, amazing. I do love though. that video, though. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing, and it was just it's just inspired. It's gorgeous too, and it's there, there's something to that. I just I don't know. I love it. I love it just as much as you do. And now, what can you tell me about departure? And 
Okay, so I notice as I'm looking down the tracks, so we got some stuff that's lowercase, some stuff that's uppercase. Is there a um, rationale behind that? Like departures lowercase and waiting is lowercase, but everything else is upper. I did do that intentionally. Um, it, it it just seemed. I have a couple of songs on there that are that are Radiohead inspired. For lack, okay. you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, I really fell in love with uh, uh, what's the name of the album in Rainbows. Right. So I saw them perform. It was like uh, can't remember the the name of the venue they played. It was it was some studio live from somewhere, but they were recorded in 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 a in a studio, uh, but uh, like a live environment surrounded by cameras. And there was no audience or anything, right? And watching them, like having heard the album, and I liked it, but I wasn't like blown away by it because I sure. loved OK Computer. I was like, fucking yeah. OK Computer is so goddamn amazing. I couldn't turn that fucking thing off. It, I, yeah, it uh, personally, it takes me a while. Does it? Yeah, there's I, something about it just just hooked between me. Between that and Kid A, and yeah, Kid A, Kid A was okay. Like once it got a little more electronic, they sort of lost me. Yeah, and then they put out this album, and I thought it was, you know, I thought it was sort of like the others, where it was a little bit electronic, right? And then I watched them perform it, and they're bouncing from the piano to this thing to the guitar. He's like, everybody's like, the guitar player's got fucking maracas in his hand, and he takes yep. a break to play the guitar, and he's sitting in front of a keyboard, and everybody's doing that. They're balancing all these. Analog instruments. It really is amazing, and I I know it got its due, but I still think there's a portion of it that's underrated. Yeah. Like down the line, somebody's gonna look at this and say, "This is one of the greatest things." And are I don't know. Are they in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't so. think 90% of people worth being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but that's a whole other ball of shit to get into. I know. I, You know, I know the, the, the nominees just came out. Yeah. A li- I got to admit, you know, I get it, you know, for the for the sake of what we do. Like, I'm so, I, you know, I wanted Motorhead. I wanted Judas Priest, always, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. But I wanted Pat Benatar. Yeah. Pat Benatar didn't get in. And I was just like, you know... It, it's such a it's it's a really minute uh, piece of information, but um, is it? I think it's is it Geraldo, is the guitarist, uh, in in with Pat Benatar. I, I think his last name is Geraldo. I, th- I think so. Her, hus- and, her husband, right? Yeah, I believe so. And they yeah. have I don't remember if it was him or somebody else in the band. They have the distinction of being the first guitar ever heard on MTV. Because the first song was Radio Killed the Radio yeah. uh, Video Killed the Radio, Radio Killed Star. Radio Star. The second was... Um, Blinded Me With Science, wasn't it? No, the second no? was her, uh, You Better Run. You know, You Better Run, You Better Hide, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But that was the first song on MTV that actually had guitar in it. So they have that. So f- just by that alone, they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You would think, but it, it, none of it makes sense. <laughs> What's that? Grammys were tonight. Grammys were tonight. Okay, do, um, John, uh, do you have anything specific to say about the Grammys? Are you excited? Uh, first off, it was a travesty. No, I'm just kidding. Tra- I, uh, <laughs> uh, from what I saw, I watched, I was paying attention to this band called Gr- uh, Grail playing on yes. the stage. And, and crushing, by the way. And absolutely de- uh, yeah. crushing. And then um, the Grammys were on, and it was just funny to see all the people from the Grammys and then just having uh, Grail playing at the yeah. same time. Yeah, it's 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 almost surreal. It was surreal. I was like, dude, I, you're getting crushed by riffs. <laughs> oh, there's so the, much stoner doom metal. I there's, like, there's people coming up and accepting awards and shit. The, so, the, exactly. the crushing amount. I'm like, I told Josh, I was like, dude, these people on TV, these are the people that like did not believe the Titanic would sink and stayed in their cabins in their mm. $1,500 suits. And, <laughs> I forget the yeah. fact that 99% of them don't play an instrument. <laughs> right. It's, it's all, they yeah. recorded all this shit on their phone and then they go up and like, so the Grammy, it was just hilarious. What does the guy do? He does, doesn't do anything. Yeah, it was it was hilarious, uh, but uh, it was fun. Tonight was a good night. I've got opinions. If yeah, I could pass it, the Anyways. mic back over to you. Um, what? How does it? How does it pronounce? Kurt opinions. Kurt. Got things to say. Kurt sized. Oh, criticized. Criticized. That okay. was that was an old song. That it was it was part of just sort of a jam that I used to do with my friend Matt. 
and we had gotten together. We were, you know, we were both really into Curtis Mayfield, like fucking Superfly, fantastic right. album, Roots, fantastic album. I have a couple of live albums that Matt had given me on CD that are just, goddamn, they're incredible. They're incredible. So love Curtis Mayfield, and we had this, uh, we had this little weird jam that we wrote that was very like seventies Curtis Mayfield sounding, like kind sure. of soul shit. And we never really did anything with it. We, you know, jammed on it. We recorded it, but we, I, you know, it was never put out on anything. I never played it out at a show or anything. Right. So I decided I wanted to pull that thing back out and screw with it and actually record a version of it. Sure. And so, and it never had a name, so I just called it. Curtis so it just call it C- Curtis Side. Yeah. Okay. It's ba- you know. Yeah. Fair named enough. It after Curtis Mayfield, more or less. All right. A slow panic. Isn't it always? It is. Every single day. It only speeds up when I lay down and try to close my eyes. <laughs> okay, are you one of those people? I'm absolutely one of those people. Like, so, I, I don't understand people who could just fucking go to bed. My, <laughs> let me tell you something. My wife, she, who you know, does she kind of like hates it because she's just, there are days when I literally watch you, and I have a CPAP machine, so, you know, she, she hears the Darth Vader mask. Yeah. And she's like, you motherfucker. Like, all you do, you put your head down and... She says, I've never talked to a human being that can actually fall asleep while talking to me. Yeah. And I said, I just, when it's my time to go, I, I, I go. That's, and, man, and like, bless you for <laughs> and, that you're able and to And like, do that. here it is like, oh, when I, like. you know, I go to bed and I wake up, like, I don't remember dreams. And she's like, I had this terrible dream and let me tell you, and it's, I, I, I understand it. You were too busy sleeping. But good, I was yeah. too bu- I was too busy getting a good night's sleep. I swear I think I die every yeah. night and I just wake up cuz it's just black. It's just straight black. That's how you want it though. Do you feel rested when you get up? Oh, I feel like a champ. I feel like a million bucks. See? No, I I w- it takes me forever to fall asleep. I wake up multiple times. I have nightmares constantly. Really? And then it's time to go to work. <laughs> that so okay. Yeah. So, it's just right <laughs> now, right back into the chaos. Does that drive any of the music? It, it absolutely does. Absolutely. Have you read some of the titles? Didn't we just say a yes. slow panic? That is a slow panic. <laughs> um, yeah. Again, it, it's, it goes right back to the idea of I'm either trying to salve uh, anxiety or right. I'm just trying to exercise anxiety. Sure. I'm either trying to smooth it out or just or, or inject it into something. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Now, what? It, now, okay. So, let, so uh, we've gone over a few of these tracks so far, and anxiety is like a, a running theme. What <laughs> if something quells that, and you you're not anxious anymore? Will that? Do you feel like that will change the vibe well, of the? No, uh, I mean, it, but with this album in particular, it was more. It was more like immediate home stresses and just life stresses right there's there's always been and always will be there isn't a single goddamn thing in this world that is gonna keep me from feeling like existential dread okay because every you know the idea of getting older and like do you go to a home do right. I go to a retirement home do my kids take care of me sure like what the fuck happened? like maybe I died before then maybe I live to a, a hundred and I'll be like my great grandmother who lived to a hundred and one Ever since she was 70, she sat at the Christmas dinner table going, I want to die. I, want, I, I can't. My eyes are I'm blind. They're, 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 this, like, she was, this, you this know. very Italian sounding here. Oh, she is. Does very she make, Italian. But did she make good sauce? Oh, she absolutely did. Or, or she yeah. also got us into spinach. Okay, so you're, are you, are you Italian? Uh, well. Or partial? Uh, partial. I'm a, I'm a mutt. I actually did one of those ancestry things. Right. And I'm English. Like my, my grandmother. Well, jolly, jolly well. My Pip. grandmother is Polish. Okay. My grandfather is Italian. Right. My dad's a mix of things, and apparently his mix of nonsense just like washed everything out. It, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, you're from England, and like, <laughs> fair enough. And like Eastern, like weird Eastern Bloc countries. And, now, and by the way, now that everybody's gone, isn't it crazy? It never fails. And I and and I hate using absolutes, but I will say, never fails. As soon as I put the mics on, as soon as I put the mics up to me, somebody comes right next to us and starts being loud. And I, I you know, God bless. I'm never going to say, you know, don't have fun. But I'm just yeah. like, can you see there's microphones here? I mean, for love of God. But it's also a slice of life. It's, it is. Oh, it's, it's a true. thing, it's it's a thing that just yeah, happened. Like, how many, put it, put it this way. How many 
or, or, or if you yeah. came here, you wouldn't have predicted that there was going to be a guy next to you no. that knew exactly the song you were talking about and was a Neil Young fan. Yeah. And it didn't help that That's Dan walked up. Rare, Dan walked really? up and fed him like a fucking street pigeon with yeah, tater tots with out of his pocket. Tater tots out of his pocket. It's like all these, and then the flock of birds like, come over, and you want to know why it got loud. Like, it, I mean, he might wonder where there's like a bunch of food at the bottom of the washing machine every <laughs> single time. I like, don't even want to see know, his lint trap. Been, could have been That's a, a tot, nightmare. Could have been a meatloaf. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Good man. Just fucking right. noodles and <laughs> let's yeah, a little ramen or ramen. Wait, is it? We I, I was talking earlier with my wife about it. ramen, ramen, ramen. Now we're getting too political. I don't ramen's like this. Good. If you're from the southern hemisphere, it's ramen. It's northern ramen. Region, it's it's. And you're a blue coat, then it's ramen. Ramen. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, let's move. <laughs> but only let's if move it's forward. A South African so swallow. we talked about how much of a slow panic that you have, <laughs> but now you're waiting. What yes. can you tell me? There, there is a person in my life that I am like literally waiting for. So it's it's like I, not that I'm hesitant to talk about it, but I don't want to. I don't know. I don't want to dive too far into a thing and turn this into like a Doctor Phil episode. <laughs> well, you know, well we can you know, leave like, it there though. Like, it's, oh, it's your how about this? And, it's your song. Yeah, you leave it at that. Yeah, and you, so you, it's, it's waiting for somebody. Yeah, it's literally about someone, and and just yeah, just the process of waiting and like having to deal with like not knowing exactly like how it's going to work out or what's going to happen, but knowing right. that it's something that you want to do, right? And just everything between deciding that and it actually happening is just like this torturous space where you're like, you don't know, everything's sort of up in the air, right? But you're hopeful that it all works out, but until you know, until you reach some conclusion good or bad like it's just being being in like the stagnant now is madness yeah it's debilitating yeah oh i love having like (laughs) something at the end in sight you know some kind of goal that you carry it yeah again because other you know come back to like getting old we end up in retirement you know all these all these things that you could fill your head with that could happen between right now and your end point right so having something in between that you know, to, to buffer you from thinking about the ultimate conclusion, you know, there's something in between that you can, you can look forward to and that you can have and that, it, and that it helps you through just the journey of life. You know, it's something everybody needs. I think it's one of the big unspoken things is like, to some degree, everyone has, has an inner panic about all of it. Like nobody, nobody knows how it's all going to turn out or what, how, the, how it's going to end or no. like, how do you plan for it? Not at how, all. Like can you live a comfortable life up until the end? Like there, there's all these, all these possibilities and, and, and stumbling blocks and, and nightmare scenarios that you can sit and go through. And, and to, to a degree, I think everybody, everybody imagines, you know, what could happen or not happen. Until, of course, I go to sleep and then I don't really don't care. And then you black and you, out and everything. You're, you're is the just, person that stays up all night thinking about it. Yeah. I've, I just carry your worry for you. Thank you. I, I sincerely appreciate that. I'm, I'm like a the, golem in you that do. sense. So I do like, the, I, but the next one, I like this word. I've always I, I enjoy this um, just as a, a as a word to use. Brackish, yeah, I like that word a lot. What well, um, can you tell me about brackish? That was that was very influenced by just visuals. Like I was I was thinking about you know like New Orleans and swampy waters and just right? just weird shit like that. I don't know why. Maybe I was reading Swamp Thing. <laughs> like whatever it was did the arm grow out and yeah just like yeah. arms tentacles and tendrils and all <laughs> kinds of leafy greens oh the root comes out all the time <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm sure there's another story that's uh, another story yeah it's um, another story yeah it's, you know. yeah so uh, we're, for whatever reason my head my head was in that space right. and I, I just wanted to write something that sounded like like what I was picturing in my head okay and there, there, you know there's a lot of crossover with when I draw, when I play music, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'll sit and draw and I'm always thinking of music. You know, I right. play music and it's a very visual thing. Like it just, like we're sitting playing together. That's my favorite thing is playing with a group of people and you've got just all these possibilities and ideas bouncing back. Even if it's a, even if it's a written song and everybody knows a song and you're playing it, there's all sort of little variables. Maybe somebody slows something down or speeds something up or wants to change something. Right. And just like sort of, 
jumping on it like like riding a bull, you know, and you're just trying to follow it wherever it goes. And there, you know, the the exercise of of the unknown. It's kind of odd because as I hear brackish, you know, and you think murky. Yeah. But when I see your art, I never I, I I've yet to see anything particularly murky in the art. It was just the different influences that I grew up with okay. were, were very clean, pristine, detailed, line-oriented right. illustrators that right. I fell in love like Bernie Wrightson. Uh, my mom was a, was a big Stephen King fan when I was growing up. Sure. And she would you know, get all those like, random house books or whatever the hell they were. Like, the, uh, like They were penny books or you pay a dollar or whatever the hell right, it is. Right, and right. All these books that. keep yeah. showing up to your fucking house. Somehow it was a scam. I don't remember how. Um, like a well, pyra- some pyramid scheme shit. Like you have to buy one book, and yeah. the book probably costs the price of all of them put together. Probably. It's like, oh, you do have to pay for one five thousand dollar book. Yes. Do so, we, you remember that, like Columbia House? Yeah, and yeah, all? exactly. Yeah, and that's shit. that's a lot of how I came into the music that I listened to. We had those ca- fucking cassette tapes, like right. whatever they didn't have playing in the house that were albums. Like my dad played; he was really into country, so it was like Alabama and um, uh, shit. Who else? Play me some mountain music. Yeah, it was it's like grandma and grandpa used to play. <laughs> all I right, can't, I can't even I can't even think of all the the weird country albums we used to listen to. Kansas, yeah, there's probably a lot of Kansas in there. So there was a lot of that growing up. But my mom also, you know, got those those cassettes, those penny cassettes, and it was like Jimi Hendrix smash hits. Oh, nice! And fucking the first time I heard Roadhouse, I'm like, I'm gonna play blues guitar. That's what we're fucking doing. <laughs> right, that's right. all there is to it. And I listened to that shit over and over and over again. And the other one was um, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, The Sky is Crying. Oh, so, isn't yeah. that amazing? So again, it was like, boom, blues. And I started tracking down all this blues that I could find. Most of it was a lot of the electronic, of the electric guitar blues that I was coming across. Okay. It was a lot more upbeat and right. not nearly as, as, as melodic as Stevie Ray Vaughan and Hendrix are going to make it. I mean, sure. they, just, they were just at an, in another place. They took something and elevated it to huge heights. So everybody before that was a bit of a letdown. Right. There, were, there were bands that I found that I loved, like Howling Wolf and his yeah, guitar Howling player Wolf, Hubert Sumlin. Robert Johnson. Fuck yeah, there's so many great ones in there. But it, it was just adjusting to having heard like the pinnacle of this crazy guitar playing sure. and then going through the influences and going, oh yeah, they weren't as good. They're great, but you know that adjustment of um, uh, expectation, I guess. So like wanting to hunt down more of these guitar players right. and finding out they weren't as good as Jimi Hendrix. Like, why well, I shouldn't have been surprised. But, no, that, seriously. But yeah, so, so through that, I wanted to have just, I wanted sad blues. I'm like, this shit isn't sad enough. <laughs> so I came across, <laughs> I don't know, even as a kid. Okay. So, so I came across uh, John Coltrane's Blues. Oh, album. Nice. And he had a he put out a blues album. And I was like, this is fucking fantastic. It was so vocal and so melodic and soulful and it just it's so expressive. There wasn't and that was a big thing. It the the other guitar players just weren't expressive enough. You didn't feel like they were they were, they were putting across as much as they as they could or what could be put across. Right. You, you, there's just something about like the way you bend a note. Or the notes that you decide to use, or the or, you know, you could do the math of it, but it all comes down to like how it feels, and if and it's it's something that just keeps getting built on the backs of other players. Oh, completely! Like you know, people talk about you know, as much as I love Hendrix, I can't say he's the best guitarist in the world anymore. That's a whole other road to go down because you've got all these technical guitarists, absolutely, who are doing insane things that maybe I listen to it and I go, it doesn't make me feel anything. I look at it and I go, holy shit. Like, that guy can play a lot of shit fast. That's, but it doesn't hit you yeah. in the soul. Yeah. But whatever the songwriting is or, or whatever's put into it isn't the same as, like, wanting something to feel a certain way. Yeah, you know, there was one artist, and uh, I don't know if you've heard of him, uh, Little Walter, or Lil yes. Walter. And he's basically a harp player. Yeah. And, you know, there was something about that, like, personally, where I liked the guitar... I like hearing that, and that's fine. But the harmonica, it's like, it's so close to you, and you have to use something that's from inside of you and literally blow out. You, yeah, you use And there's something and more to that to me. Like, mm-hmm. even like John Popper, 
uh, I, I I get sometimes I get more emotion out of what he does with the harp, and especially little Walter, than sometimes some of the guitars. To be quite honest with you, because it's like so it like it's so close to your soul. It's like you were saying about time earlier. Like right. you just need it. It's the musical equivalent of something you just need it to have a certain tone and a feel, and it's got to have all these things that line up for you that just make your soul vibrate. For Absolutely, it. like it just rings with it, and it's different for everybody. And you know, some people cross over into well, the same shit, but you know, everybody's got their thing. Oh, please! That's that's the one thing I love about coming out to a show. Mm-hmm. You never know who you're going to see, and they're like, you know, sometimes people see a, a band that I've seen dozens of times, and they're like, "This is my first time," and it's like, "Oh wow, I want to, I want to, almost like I kind of want to see your trip." Like, what are you going through yeah, who when you we, heard this? One of the bands that we saw last night. What? Uh, Colossus Quantum Colossus Quantum Colossus There yeah. we go They were Amazing. They were fantastic And the, the, Yeah They're like I could see how somebody Would listen to them And say Oh it's a hard, Hardcore punk band Right But they were playing Hardcore punk But it was like Math punk And then they would Break into these Weird doom Prog. riffs Like yep. it would Slow way down All this proggy Interstitials And all these Like transitions And clutch-ish. then back into the Weird yeah, math punk like clutch they were doing all. They were all over the fucking place. It was and, fantastic. Wow. And they're like, they're like one of the. Personally, I would say like one of the secrets of Arizona right now. Mm-hmm. That yeah. if you haven't heard them yet, you know, go on Bandcamp. I, I probably got some on Bandcamp. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes. But yeah, they. I've seen them at a couple of shows, and they bring something. It's like you're expecting X, but you get X Y Z. And that's and that's, and that's the beauty of it. Good. One of the best parts about hearing people who really get into doing doing something creative with music and and really not worrying about any sort of labels or boundaries and just like taking all the things that they like right. and throw it into a, into a song or a band and going to see a band like that who who is so clearly advanced in what they do right and not knowing what to expect at all like maybe constantly you know listening to music and going oh that's not where I would take it and being like completely surprised and no expectation at all about how they were going to warp this soundscape into the thing that they were doing like you like like I was saying all the all the weird influences that were in there and listening to it and sort of expecting it to go one way and then it goes another way and then it goes in the, you know it's that's it's a lot of fun and let's talk about that <laughs> let's talk about, let's talk about some place we've never been okay which is the next track yeah, I I like creating trippy soundscapes, you right. know, to lay things over. Yeah, and it it was almost like a like a God. This is gonna sound so corny, but it's the only thing I can think of. Almost like a sound poem in okay. a weird way, because again, it's like you're you're imagining something with someone, and like what that what that presence of another person is going to be like and, and and trying to put that into into sound you know it, it's it sounds so weird saying it it's shit that i think all the time when right. you say it out loud it's like jesus christ like i <laughs> fucking sound like it does i you know it should smell like incense in here and somebody should hear a beaded curtain just fucking <laughs> all this champa yeah all this weird hippie shit that i'm talking about very nice but but yeah, I mean that's that's essentially what it is. Like wanting to wanting to find a way to to cradle and deal with, you know, a lot of weird emotional upheaval. You know? Right. And and it's that running yeah. theme through the whole album. Yeah. Really. Um and I gotta put I gotta put my shades on for this. Uh I dreamt of nothing. What can that, you tell me about that? That goes right back to In Rainbows. And you know, I love bands like Portishead. There's, there's something I I really enjoy about that that neo not even neo like like oh, that is noir that neo romanticism that sort neo- sort of I don't I don't even know what you would call Portishead necessarily, but it, it's sort of like like French lounge act music yeah but with like you know there's like a a beat to it and it's it's real like I don't want to say trip hop because nobody I, I don't know if that only applies to like 
rap music. It's almost like you know, lilty lil- lil- in a sense. Yeah, but it's it's very soundscaping and really trippy, and it sounds like every song sounds like it should be in a fucking James Bond movie or like a '70s <laughs> spy thriller with Gene Hackman. It's just, <laughs> somebody should we be, be wearing pantyhose, and there should be a dead hooker under a bed. Ooh, but it's 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 very dead hooker night. under the bed for the that win. Was, that was last night. For the it's night. yeah, it's, I wasn't there. It, it's it's very much in that vein. It's got it's very nuanced in that it, it's got that style that jo- that genre feel to it, and you know it, it's it, it's just something I, I wanted to try with with guitar, bass, and drums. And, and much right. like Porter said, they're a guitar, bass, and drum band. Uh, the same thing with all of Radiohead albums for the for the most part. You know, it's guitar, bass, and drums, and they enhance it with all this other shit. So it was a lot of me being able to uh, twiddle dials and make weird, you know. Uh, uh, mechanical noises and you know, create like a, a strange abstract science fiction for lack of a better word vibe sure. to it I got you, know, you. I, I grew up loving Blade Runner and that whole soundtrack right is so fucking incredible I love that that weird oh man that weird feel so I wanted to be able to capture that and and that's, yeah that's just what that ended up being well, thank you. That's that's the entire album. I really appreciate that. And I, I, I th- this is the thing that kills me is like, you two are here and you're here, and uh, I, you know, usually I have a list of stuff to ask. You make it so easy. Like, there's nothing here. You can see it, and we just have a simple <laughs> conversation. And it's, oh, man. I, I got that from you the first time. I yeah. even before we were on mic, it's like, I know you're gonna have something to say. And I really appreciate you being so open and honest with what you're dealing with. And, you know, we, we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. If it helps one person, you made a difference. Absolutely. And yeah. I hope that this, you know, I know you talk about anxiety and such. I know people struggle with it. People struggle with depression. I hope that we can at least turn some people on to, like, listen to this. Maybe it'll get yeah. you through it. Absolutely. And if not, you know, do some do yourself some justice. Go get some help. Don't be too don't be too big about it. Go do something about it. And uh, I appreciate you sharing all this. Absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's also about you know finding something to put it into. Right. Like if you're just don't don't be afraid to just make stuff. You know, you don't you don't have to expect anything to come out of it. Sure. You don't have to. Have 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 some high minded goal at the end of it where you're going to make all this money or you're going to become known or whatever you know wh- however you might think you need to approach it just just to make it and be okay with just making it and putting it out into the world and whatever happens with it happens with it it's it, it very much makes you feel like you're part of this whole big thing that's moving along absolutely you know? and because again like you said like how does it feel to have people you know review it and and say they loved it or you know they they got something out of it it's it's just evidence it's like it's like back to roots you know you just you're putting this virtual seed and just seeing where where the thing travels absolutely comes back to you like one of my favorite stories is when down first got together they released a few demos on cassette right and they just put it out there they were all in other bands and they had, you know, they had their their obligations and shit. Right. They just put this demo out there, and and I don't know, like a decade later, somebody showed up at one of their shows that had some copied, over copied, over co- like, you know, it'd been reproduced a million times sure. over and sounded like shit. It's like, yeah, I got this. I was in Denmark, <laughs> and I, I discovered you guys, and it like brought it back to them. Wow. It like came all the way back around. Isn't that crazy? Like no, you know, no advertising, a- advertising, no, no. Uh, Big media push from a record label. Wave, right? Yeah, yeah. Just it was just, old school. Just Word a fucking mouth. band put out a fucking tape. That far, you know? Tape trading and and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. I, I, fuck. I wish more people would just make things and put them out there. There, you know, there's so many people that I've known in life who are really good at something. I I know there's there's a a friend of a friend that I know who's an amazing drummer, incredible guitar player can sing he's he's incredible all the way around refuses does nothing with it it right. hurts my brain he doesn't play shows he doesn't right. jam with anybody right the number of times i've been able to sit down and play guitar with him like twice like it, it's insane that he just doesn't do it 
I had him record drums on something one time. Right. And that was it. It was like pulling teeth. And well, like the moon so had to be in a certain position. You come out to these shows because I don't see him a lot, you know? And, and I know you're a busy guy. You got family and stuff, but it's always awesome to see you come I'm out. a hermit. <laughs> I'm a hermit. I apologize. Uh, okay, so I didn't. I didn't preface this, so I'm going to spring it on you. Um, I'm trying to get back in 2020 of asking you a question. Uh, or, or I apologize. Let me rephrase that. Uh, I want you to ask a question for me uh, to ask the next band I interview. Oh, okay. It could be anything. It could be anything. No, yeah, no boundary. I would, I would love to know how, in, in their minds how it's how the interaction is while they're playing music like if there's something i keep going back to this idea whenever i'm playing it's almost like you're building a three-dimensional space right and you can see the turns and it's a very visual thing it's like you're in a place and you're going somewhere and you're traveling through this you're inside something that you're making but you're making it with sound and it's got textures and it's got visuals and and as you're changing parts of the song the visuals are changing i would love to know if they they experience that at all okay like if cool. any of them if all of them while they're all playing they just trip balls and I don't know. <laughs> and have at it yeah I, I, I would i would i would love to know that all right cool that's where we'll leave it thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you hang around thank you so much to josh and john for giving me their time let's hear a track off the latest release called waiting this is like lambs to the cosmic slaughter
Doom Tomb Podcast at gmail.com. That is how to reach us. Uh, Doom Tomb Podcast.com or Doom Tomb Podcast. You can find it on social media Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I'm on Snapchat every once in a while. I don't know. I don't really care. Either way, so we got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm hoping or I'm guessing that I'm going to have to do a bunch of uh, phone interviews because there are no shows. Uh, so. Keep it safe out there, people, and I hope you're stocked up. I am still looking for some toilet paper, and, uh, you know, it's the way it goes. Stay safe out there, everybody, and don't forget to stay heavy. Oh, yeah, and now this is the best time to buy all that band merch. Support the people that you listen to. Buy their stuff. They will be so grateful. All right, I'm out. Later on. 